Hey y'all. It's a rainy day today. You know, some sometimes I could just sit here all day and look at the rain, watch the rain go by. It's peaceful, it's quiet. Yeah. So, uh, there's been a slight change of plans in the uh, cancer treatment. Uh, what is it? Uh, yeah. This time last week they did a blood they did blood work and found that the white blood cell count white blood cell count is low and that means I don't meet the criteria for the clinical trial. Which means uh, which is well there's standard chemotherapy, standard immunotherapy, and clinical trial immunotherapy. So uh, and I couldn't meet the criteria. So they said you have an option. Just say, clinical trials are wash, go ahead with the chemo, the chemotherapy, and the immunotherapy. And I said, I'll go with the other option. I'll wait another week to see what my white blood cell count is. And here we are the next week. This is Tuesday, August 22nd. It's still low. Oh, back to the option. We'll say, uh, okay, day after tomorrow. The clinical trials are washed. Go ahead with the chemotherapy and the immunotherapy. We'll go ahead without the clinical trial. So, or wait another week. We don't want to wait too long. Um, so, oh, and by the way, it's, I could probably get away with another week because it's not an aggressive cancer. It's an adenocarcinoma, non-small cell. If it was small cell, I'd be in a world of hurt a long time ago. Okay, so it's non-small cell adenocarcinoma. And when I think about it, it's like, uh, what was it? It was discovered June 1st. And it, the one tumor in this lung was only about, about an inch in size. Here we are almost three months later, and it's still about the same size. So it really hasn't aggressively grown. And it hasn't metastasized throughout my body. So. I could risk another week because it's not an aggressive cancer, but we don't want to take the chance. So what am I going to do? Am I going to go ahead with the chemo this, the day after tomorrow? But then the oncologist said you have another option, just the immunotherapy. I said, you mean like I could skip the chemo? And she said, yeah, it can be done. Uh, tell me more. <laughs> so, uh, basically, the plan was four rounds of chemo in three week cycles. You just go there once. It's not like, you know, not like you go there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then wait three weeks. No, this is like just once, wait three weeks, four cycles. So that means three, six, nine, nine weeks. And also, they would put what's called a, I think I mentioned this before, a PIC line, P I C C. I forget what it stands for, something about peripheral something catheter, I don't know. And it goes in, goes in your vein right here, it goes all the way you know, through your thoracic cavity and into your vena cava and close to your heart. So I'd have this thick, I have garden hose shoved down my thoracic section for like nine weeks. You know, it won't kill you, but it's just, not something you want. You got to keep your eye on it because there's risks involved, like maybe blood clots or shit like that. And I don't need another blood clot, that's for sure, because the next one could kill me, which would be a pulmonary embolism. Not good. Your heart gives out. Your right ventricle, and then you die. <laughs> I can explain that, but that's another story altogether. So, anyways. Skip chemo. Hmm, that doesn't sound so bad because who the hell wants chemotherapy? You know. Um, so, um, okay, side effects of immunotherapy. Well, you got to remember that. How would I put it? Okay, so my T cells know that there's something there, but you know, because like, she explained that. Yeah, it's like you know, the, uh, they uh, they sent. What is it? The tissue samples from the, for the biopsy to I think Toronto, 
and then they study it, they look at the genetic markers and look at other things and uh, I, she says something about you know, my T cells are trying to get around those cancer cells but they just can't find it. It's like they're all, the, they're all gathered around trying to get to it but they can't. Now, what's going on is that the cancer cells have a protein-based membrane like a lot of cells in your body do. Except this one kind of works like a cloaking shield and the T cells can't see it and you can't find the bad guy. So the immunotherapy is like a protein-based or a protein inhibitor. And then the cloaking shield comes down, and the T cells say, ah, there it is, and they identify it. But let's, but you got to remember that, you see, um, how do I put it? The, uh, the cancer cells are based off of good cells, except they're, you know, Genetically, uh, the, uh, the, the gene that tells them not to grow too fast fails and they grow too fast. So, so let's, say, let's say the good cell, we'll call it the good cell in your epithelios is called, we'll call it one, two, three. But the cancer cell is kind of the same thing, so we'll call it one, two, three red. So T cells, they get to identify it and let the rest of your body know who the bad guy is. And the cancer, the T cells say, be on the lookout for one, two, three red. Well, here's the problem. There is the possibility that the good cells, because they're called one, two, three, they'll look at them too and say, well, maybe we should go after them too. There's that possibility. And I think, what is it? Uh, the most common risks of uh, side effects would be your T cells going after other parts of your body causing it was, they said it's colitis and skin rash are the other are the most common risks or side effects. But I think the I think the oncologist said the side effects might only last just just under a week or something like that. So uh, that's not so bad. But yeah, the thing is, this immunotherapy, even though it's every six weeks, you know, this could go on for two years. And so. Yeah, that's when I did the math, it's like eight point three times a year. Uh, I gotta do it eight about eight times a year. Uh, which is not too bad, but but like at least this way I don't have to go through chemo. Nobody wants chemo. So I decided it may take longer, but I'll probably probably be a happier person. Uh, yeah. So that's the situation. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you might have heard how uh, uh, I asked the, the oncologist about what's this, what's this thing about people saying, you, know, you hear people saying, oh, I, uh, I cut sugar out of my diet and I cured my cancer. <laughs> well, what the oncologist told me, and people, some people say, yeah, stay away from sugar. But what the oncologist told me made perfect sense. Um, it's like, the, you know, we all know that the good cells in your body need glucose. If, you, if your cells could not get the glucose, it'd be like having diabetes. You know, if you, if you don't have insulin that tells your cells to receive the sh glucose, you would be in a world of hurt. So you might think, okay, the person that cut sugar out of their diet altogether, well, how come they're not hurting? How come their their good cells aren't you know, like not hurting for for glucose? How come they're not going into a diabetic coma, not getting glucose? You know, if they're still healthy and walking around, that means their good cells are getting glucose, which they need because that's fuel for all the cells in your body. So what's going on? They cut sugar out of their body, yet they're still okay. Here's what happens: even if you cut sugar out of your diet, your body will take carbohydrates or even proteins and fat, and convert it into sugar. You know, carbohydrates, it converts quickest. So your body is gonna convert carbohydrates into sugar, whether you like it or not, to feed your good cells in your body. So whether you cut sugar out of your diet or not, there's no difference. Well, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, so that's the situation. So, yeah, it may take longer, but at least I'll avoid chemo. Anyways, let us let us sit here. It's peaceful. It's quiet. Watch the rain.